Let's uh, talk a little bit about Charmian. Oh, yes. You know, we have to talk about her. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, the remor her talent, her career, but the frame of it for me is how do you have someone who's that talented as Charmian King, who has worked over the decades or worked, and the country gave her such an unfair career? I know. You know? Yeah. I, I, again, it's back to the larger theme of how do we build that place. And there's that talent yeah. of Charmian King, and the country never gave her the palette, so to speak. Um, that was very sad to watch that happening, too. Some time ago, I was up looking at the Crest Theater. I went inside, and the person who took it over as a movie theater put up a whole display of pictures of things that were done at the Crest. And Charm, Charm was there once, and I happened to say to him, are you kidding? Charmian did 21 pro productions here. She did an awful lot of work. Mm -hmm. But we have it. We tend to put aside our history, of those. You know, the Crest Theater is not a, not, uh, not that commonly uh, used uh, sort of memory ever ever again. So there we were, uh, there she was, getting a hundred dollars of her show or something, putting on these marvelous jobs. She was bloody good in television, good in some of her film stuff. She did a couple for National Film Board. And she had a career going. She had a Broadway play. She was in Love and Libel once, you know, a long time before. And she wanted to live in Canada. She was given the possibility of going to L.A. when she was in New York to, uh, for a contract, a studio contract. She oh. turned it down. That's how much she believed in Canada and believed in furthering uh, uh, theater history here. She was one of the beginners of the uh, Straw Hat Players, you know, with a lot of wonderful people, and uh, went from there to the Crest. She played St. Joan at, for Robert Gill at the early days of the Hart House, yeah. Hart House drama. Wonderful stuff. Her father had her picture all over his house, all over the house, with these black and whites. I still have a lot of them. She was fabulous. I'd only seen her hurt once. She lost out a part of all things on King of Kensington. She came back from L.A., we came back to live. That was the first thing in her life that she, she said, I couldn't even get that, in other words. So what she did after that was to look to the ledge again, I guess, because she never mentioned it again. And she'd had such a startling, you know, lovely, lovely start, but never mentioned it again. She kept living as what she did. She kept being more charm than ever, more charm, and uh, passed that on to Leah and so on. And we, we talked all the time, and she was fabulous, and she went to all the theater, supported Soul Pepper like crazy when it started, and... Uh, did a lot of wonderful work. And now again, uh, you know, sort of uh, nowhere, to, nowhere to go. Uh, uh, there's no, you know, th there isn't a spot for you kind of thing. And she just didn't. She had Leah and uh, had a child and sort of went about that, uh, that and watched me doing what I was doing. And Rightly or wrongly, I couldn't stop what I was doing. I had to keep mo keep moving. Uh, did you have more? Uh, did you have more survival instincts? I mean, there you're painting, there you're writing, there you're acting, there you're painting, there you're filming. You move around, and charm is was like many of the other parts of the committee who can't, who don't have those multiple talents. That's right. You know. Well, theater's not working, I'll go to TV. Oh, TV's not working, I'll go to film. Oh, film's not working, go. They don't have that kind of stay on your feet, keep moving, keep ducking, keep moving. Yeah. And she was a, a, a straighter shooter. I right? know. It's hard on those people. I know. I've been reminded by a few people in town here, and she, she, uh, she reminded me too. You know, if I had a bad day or felt down about some silly thing, 
she'd say, Gordon, look what you've done. Yeah. Look what you've done. You haven't stopped. And you can paint and you can write and you can do these things. The trouble is, when you want something really desperately, such as I did with acting, something like painting or whatever, which had come so naturally to me when I was a child, uh, was not enough anymore. I'm not even sure I had respect for it. I just simply did it. Did it. Right. A niece or a nephew would have a child, a baby or something, and they'd ask me to paint the baby, you know. I mean, I would stop to do things, but then I had to get back to, guess what? Get back to waiting. To waiting, really. I was a waiting actor, like every waiting actor. And that's what I wanted. And I gave all my thought to, oh, I wish. I gave all my thought to, I've got to get it, got to get it. And I'd get my all, I'd get angry in Los Angeles. I was furious with what was happening. Stuff I wouldn't have touched with a barge pole. Furious at what you were not getting or furious at, for what? At what I was getting and what I was not getting, yeah, right. both. So I couldn't enjoy where I was living. Charm was content for a while and to just, to, just to watch what was happening. Well, what was happening was, you know, that anything like a swim, having a swimming pool wasn't enough anymore. You know, that kind of thing. Right. No, well, where's this going to end? Everyone has a swimming pool. I gotta have a, a shot at a, something good happening here so I can prove myself again on another level or whatever. In the American book, you know, no. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. The work was not there. So Charm watched it happen. Yeah. Watched me uh, deal with it. And uh, when I started to write, I thought, I'm pretty good, you know. So that, that wasn't bad. I could then start to work that into the rest of it. But, um, and don't forget, back to CBC, there was a time when the phone rang and there was a job at the other end. Mm -hmm. That's not happening anymore. And then you get to a certain age, so they label you and they treat you as that. I was standing in line for Santa Claus at Eaton's, you know, sort of thing. I just want to point out that Gordon Vincent, the career, the Order of Canada, the ovation in the House of Commons, is talking like all the other actors who say, I have to wait, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. What is that? <laughs> Does that happen to Judy Dench? No. Does that happen to Helen Mirren? No. That's Canada. For all its we great wait. things and all its... Yeah, we wait. And uh, oddly enough, I mean, somebody from the outside has got to think that's crazy. Yeah. They must think that's insane. It's a lifetime. It's part of your life. Get on. But no, we're into, to, we're into continuity. <laughs> we know continuity. We know that it's just left over from the other, t the last time you were working. Now it's going to happen again. And what a joy it is to work and you'd find again for a while.